Hi guys, welcome to the next video tutorial and it's the last one for this particular presentation and what we are going to be looking at now is your simulation environment. So setting up your simulation and what I'll be doing is I'll be continuing with the general idea that uh, we are not focusing on a specific plant design, whereas we're just looking at how to get started with COCO. Or yeah, in this case, it's COCO. Uh, you're depending on which university you are at, you probably could be using Aspen or COCO. Um, Aspen for the um, super private schools, um, ChemCat average average private schools and then us who are you know sitting at home here we can only afford coco it's uh, a free um it's an open way uh, you can download it online and i'm just gonna i'm gonna show you where to find it now but the point is um you don't have to be sitting around most universities will give you an option to use the one that you can afford or the one that you have access to and COCO is what I have access to. And um, it's worked quite well for me. Um, and I have to point out the differences uh, between ChemCAD and COCO or COCO and ChemCAD and Aspen is, you know, COCO has a smaller database of compounds and um, thermodynamic properties and things like that. Whereas your Aspen and ChemCAD are more fully equipped you have a lot more processes that you can do on that. But the what 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 Coco lacks in um, lacks in 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 in, in uh, databases. I've seen that it runs much faster, and um, for me, I, I quite enjoy it. And the good thing is when you when once you start getting to learn, once you start getting to know Coco, you are able to also add in uh, databases onto it. So um, as I said, it depends on where you are. So let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to the COCO website. Uh, so just go cocosimulator.org and you'll be able to find it. And the page you want to go to is the downloads page where you'll download your installation, right? And the one thing I just want to uh, point out is the sample flow sheets. And these you can use to come and look at how um, certain certain unit operations are set up. The kind of settings that they put in, um, for example, your distillation columns, it's quite important to know what goes where, how to set up the top reflux, bottom reflux, how to set up your conditions inside to ensure that the distillation column runs. So you can come here and look for specific examples, look for examples that are similar to what you're doing so that you can you know, get started. And then I've already opened Coco, but when you, after installation, you will find uh, Coco uh, here. And what you will open is the coffee icon and it will bring you to this environment. Now, first things first is you want to configure your properties, right? Your property package. And the way you're going to do that is you come here, where it says configure flow sheet. You click on that item icon. And then when you get here, you'll see it will take you, take you to the property packages and you will say add. Let's just wait for it to respond. And then it will ask you for um, CAMSEP property package manager, old property package manager, or TA. I usually go for TA. Just go select. And then you go add. Let's just wait for it. You, you'll see that already, already there are some uh, packages that are there. If you, for example, go into your alkanes, um, if you just go uh, select, um, let's just say, say uh, assign what you will see is if you click edit there, it already has compounds written down, methane to hexadecane, uh, but that's not what I want to show you. So let's remove that property package. And then let's add our own. So let's just say add, and then TEA, right? And then you'll see that you have alkane C2, and then what you want is you want to add a new package. And then let's call it, uh, 
new student package description let's call it getting started right and then this is where you're going to select your um property module let's go with swap king rodley swap rodley kong and um if you go to my youtube videos there is a particular uh, video that deals with how to how to select the correct property package and you'll see we don't have compounds and to add compounds you just go add and let's just add carbon monoxide let's add hydrogen All right let's add methane um c4 let's add water just type water make it faster okay now you see assign property package to stream and you say yes and then we close that right now to start setting up your package um if you come here to flow sheet you'll see it has not you see insert there's unit operations it has stream if you do not want to use that you can come to the taskbar and if you look at the taskbar there's that arrow that's your insert stream and then that's little equipment that looks like an actor there that's where you insert, insert your streams so just as a simple example i'm just gonna insert a reactor let's go with a gibbs reactor your homework is to go find out how a Gibbs reactor works. And then let's bring in a stream coming into the Gibbs reactor and going out. While it's still green, it means it's not yet ready to run. Let's come here and let's set our pressure to bar. Let's work with five bar. Let this come in at, let's just say it's already at 350 Kelvin. And let's have it at 0.5 carbon monoxide. Let's have it at 0.5 hydrogen. The rest should be zero. Because we are dealing with more fractions. Let's put it at uh, 100 kilomoles. Let's go back to our flow sheet. As you can see, when you chose black, it means that's fully defined. Then let's double click on the reactor. If you go edit. So with your Gibbs reactor, and I said you still need to do some research on this, you've got two choices. It's either you can specify the compound, you can specify the reactions, or you can specify the compounds, right? So if we go with specify the compounds, it means you do not need a reaction package. So what you'll do is you'll go to reactive compounds and we select everything. Right, and then let's specify that our reaction is isothermal at 350. Close that, and you see that now the process is ready to run. How do you know it's ready to run? Because that little green button is saying, Yay, let's go. And if you hit run, you see that the game set is giving you a warning, you can go back and study more one or more concentrations is close to zero uh that's probably because of a limiting reagent kind of thing but you'll see that we now have products so as you can see your hydrogen is close to zero which means most of it was consumed um and then we've produced a bit of um we've produced a bit of um methane and water right so what we can then do is you can come back here and instead of having um, more carbon monoxide, you can have 0.3 of carbon monoxide and 0.7 of water, of, of, of hydrogen. Let's run it again. And as you can see, um, you're now starting to get a bit of a, a fair balance there. Uh, let's go with less. Let's have 0.1 to 0.9. Run it just playing around just to show you what would happen and yeah studying so now 
now you've got way more carbon monoxide, you've got way more hydrogen and way less carbon monoxide. But the point is you, you get the idea. That's how you run your simulator. And then um, this is at 350 degrees Kelvin. Maybe just to finish up our example, let's add a cooler. Oh, one more thing. Um, you can also look at your phase fractions. You can see that 94% of it is vapor, 5% is liquid. Um, and then if you look at your vapor composition, uh, that and your liquid composition is that. So what we can then do is to see what would happen if we decrease the temperature. As I said, I will go through this quickly. Um, should you want to go into details, we can schedule a one-on-one -on -one, um, a one-on-one -on -one tutorial. Um, and then I just want to have a flash drum at the end of the process. Flash drum is, is probably one of your simplest um, one of your simplest units uh, when it comes to vapor liquid equilibrium separations. Let's go with the output stream. So that's the vapor. And that's the liquid. So the flash drum separates according to vapor liquid equilibrium okay so let's drop the temperature so you come to a heat exchanger we'll put the outlet temperature at 300 that's fine actually let's put it at lower let's put it at about 253 kelvin right and let's look at this guy you've got options um so let's go so it's at the outlet pressure heat duty, outlet temperature, vapor fraction. So maybe let's say outlet temperature, let's keep it at the same as the incoming stream. Now we can run our system. So I want us to look at three points. First is the vapor, is the phase composition here, then 5% and not 0.5, right? Next, let's look at the phase composition here, right? Now it's 87% and 12% liquid. Right? Therefore, you will definitely have a liquid stream, which will mainly be, I expect it to be mainly water. Yes, 99% water. And then on top here, then you're going to have mainly uh, hydrogen, methane, and whatever carbon monoxide was left. And that is it for our Getting Cocoa Starter tutorial. And I hope this will give you confidence to get started with your project. Um, the DE guys at least have a bit of a starter in the presentation. But as I said, I'll try to keep this as generic as possible so that um, everyone is catered for. But at the same time, um, if, if you do need additional help, I am available for one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day. And I hope to...